Hi, it's Karen at the Cool Tool Studio, and today I'm going to show you how I used a pattern stencil to create this lovely pendant. Today I'm going to be working with a clay board, a marquee CZ, a split mandrel, a precision hole punch, an ultra clay pick, a brush, a texture tile, and some tough cards. I'm also going to be using a wonder roller, a wick away, some cool slip, and some sanding pads, some clay thickness rolling frames, easy 960 sterling clay and paste, a bale template, a jewelry shape template, a bezel template, a pattern stencil for metal clay. I'm going to start this piece off by building my setting. And one of my favorite ways to do this is a way that I learned from Lizelle, where you take your stone and you measure how deep your setting needs to be using these clay thickness frames. And what you're going to be looking for is to be able to move the snake maker across without your stone catching and dragging. So if I were to take one away, it moves, and that's too shallow. So for this setting, I've got a five cards, a three cards, and a two cards thickness for a total of 10 cards thickness. So now I'm gonna move this off to the side, and I'm gonna press a little clay patty. And it's best to work with fresh clay for this because you don't want any cracks. I'm just pushing straight down. And then we sell these bezel templates, but they don't quite go small enough for the stone that I'm working with. So I'm going to use this for the outside edge instead, and I'm just going to use my stone to figure out the size of my inside edge to cut. I'm kind of setting it in place, and then I'm going to gently push it down, not all the way in, just enough to give myself a mark. So now I'm going to pop it out. And now I know that is where I need to cut my seat. So at this point, I'm actually gonna move it onto a tough card. That way it's a little easier to move around. And I'm gonna try to cut at an angle. My pick is not straight up and down. That way my seat is kind of angled to match the angle of my stone. Right, we'll see how this goes. I'm going to set the stone on top. Now we're going to apply pressure downward to push it into the clay. So now I'm going to come back and see which side of which size from this template works. That looks like it'll be a little close. So I'm going to use this size, the 7 by 14. Try to center it. I'm going to sand it quite a bit anyways, but I'll try to get it close. And I always like to cut towards my points. Pull away the excess clay. And then I'm just going to press it one more time. Now I'm going to allow this to dry before I come back, refine the shape, and smooth it out with sanding pads. While my stone setting is drying, I'm going to move on to building the body of the pendant. I'm going to start off by prepping my work surface with some cool slip. And then I'm going to roll my clay to five cards thickness. And I'm starting off with five because I'm going to roll down to four, and that's going to give me enough material to get a nice deep impression through my stencil. So now, I'm going to move on by placing my texture down and then using my pattern stencil to figure out an area that I want my piece to be embossed with. And I like just the swirls on this texture here. So I'm going to place that and I'm going to apply some cool slip. And I'm spraying this from, oh, maybe like nine or so inches away on both pieces at once. And you don't need a lot. nudged it, scoot that back, 
I'm going to place my clay and then take my thickness frame and put it on top. So I'm going to rotate my board here so I can roll this way. It just seems a little more natural to me. And now I'm going to emboss my clay. I'm going to peel this up and then let it fall off of the stencil. And just like that, it looks like you kind of layered two pieces of clay when really you just rolled through the stencil pattern. So now I'm going to place this onto a tough card. I'm going to cut my outside edge. And I picked this shape because it kind of follows the shape of the inside as well, but has a little bit of flair. And it cuts it kind of close, but by the time you cut this edge here, you're not going to see that pattern. So I'm going to try to center it. Now I'm just going to cut this outside edge. And again, I always like to cut towards my points so I don't round them out too much. I'm going to take my excess clay away and put it in a hydrator to keep it nice and moist. So I'm going to end up placing my CZ in the middle here. And even though it's a marquee, I'm just going to use a circle punch because I like the way that that hole looks from the back. And I'm going to apply a little bit of cool slip to my corner here. And dip my precision hole punch. I'm working with the blue number four here. And I'm going to try to center it. Looks about right. And just punch straight down, twist, and pull straight up. So now this piece is ready to dry, and then I'm going to sand it and clean up these little extra pieces here. While my pendant is drying, I'm going to work on my bail. My surface here already has some cool slip on it, so I'm going to go ahead and roll two cards thickness. And I'm going to be working with bail template number 10, and I'm going to be using this smaller shape in the upper left corner here. I always like to cut on top of a tough card. It makes it a little easier to pick things up and put them down again. It also protects your work surface. So I'm cutting the shape out. Removing my extra clay. Try that again. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Find something round in your studio. I had the split mandrel laying around and found that it was really perfect for getting a nice rounded shape for your chain to go through. So I'm going to pick up this top part of my bale and I'm going to drape it over this and kind of gently round it. And again, that's just going to give me a really nice shape for my chain to go through. I'm going to set it down and allow it to dry just like that. I have a bezel here that's dried and ready for sanding. So I'm starting off with my fine sanding pad because I like a thinner bezel and while the template was great for establishing the shape, I have some material to remove. So the fine sanding pad is going to take care of things quickly. I'm going to kind of knock down this point some and just remove some of the clay. I'm also going to end up kind of rounding that top edge as I go. Once I'm happy with the shape, I'll work my way down super fine, ultra fine, and then micro fine. My settings all cleaned up and I really want to encourage you to spend some time with your settings because they can look wonky when you get started but they really clean up nicely if you just spend the time. So once you're happy with your setting we're going to attach it to our piece and before I do I'm going to use my micro fine sanding pad and just hit this top texture really quick. Again, it's easier to sand it now than it is when you have to sand around the setting. Knock off some dust. And then I'm going to dampen the surface that I'm going to be applying the stone to. Got to get my wick away. And 
Let me get nice and wet. I'm also going to dampen the back of my studding. I'm going to drop it on before scooting it around to place it. And this pattern was really perfect because it had those kind of the crosshairs there that you can use to line up your stone. Make sure everyone's centered. I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to apply some downward pressure. I'm going to allow this attachment to dry before I sand this outside edge because I'm going to create some dust and if it meets this wetness here, it's going to create a paste and kind of mess up my texture pattern. Now that this attachment is dry, I'm going to round out this outside edge. And since I'm going to kind of be rounding it, I'm starting with fine since I'm removing a good amount of material. And then just like before, I'm going to work my way down from fine to micro fine. So this edge is nice and cleaned up and I love these black tough cards because I really show you all of the dust that you can refine. So I'm going to take this and save all of that material. And now I'm ready to attach my bale. And as I said before, wrapping it around the split mandrel gives it a really nice curve. And oh, <laughs> if you want, you can either leave that inside edge there or you can trim it so it's just at this flat place where it will be attaching to the back of your piece. I'm going to go ahead and trim it. I'm going to pull out a new tough card to protect my work surface. And I'm just trimming it so that this area will rest nice and flatly against my piece. So I'm going to flip my piece over. And I've got some paste here that I'm going to be using to solidify this connection. I'm going to start off by just dampening this back piece. I'm also going to gently dampen where my bale is going to be attached before I apply the paste. Don't want it too damp though. Just barely wet. I'm going to pick up some paste and I'm going to apply it to this end here. I'm also just going to put a touch up here as well. So I'm going to flip this over. Drop it on my piece. Scoot it until I'm happy with where it is. I always like to flip it over and make sure that you can't see it from the front. And once you're happy with the placement, just apply some pressure there. And then I like to take my paintbrush and use that inside edge, if it'll reach, <laughs> there we go, to apply some pressure in there as well. And you've got some working time with this before it's really stuck in place. So I'm going to clean up any extra paste that's sticking out on the edge there after I wash out my brush. And I'm also going to angle it so I can clean up that edge. And that should be a nice strong connection for you. Once you're happy with your bale, allow it to dry, and then I'm going to sand it and clean up this edge. I waited to sand it until it was attached because it's a little easier to just hold on to this piece than trying to hold the little bale while you're sanding it. Once you're happy with your piece, you're ready to fire it. I like to support my bales while I'm firing them by putting a fiber blanket through them. And friendly reminder to wear a mask when you're working with fiber blanket, especially if you're tearing it. 
I kind of roll it into a coil and see if it'll send through. Nope, it's a little tight. I'm going to compress it some more. And send it through. So that's going to keep my bale from collapsing on itself while it's firing. Since you don't have a flat side on either side of your pieces, you can't fire this on a kiln shelf. Instead, I'm going to be firing this piece in a silica dish with either alumina hydrate or vermiculite in it. Since I'm working with EZ960, I'm firing for two hours at 1675. Here's my finished piece. I love how it looks like it was made from two separate layers of clay, when really all we did was roll onto a texture through one of our pattern stencils. I really enjoyed making this piece, and I hope you do too. Thanks for watching. Visit our learning center at cooltools.us for more cool jewelry making videos. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and be sure to sign up for our email list to be the first to hear about new videos, new products, and other cool stuff from Cool Tools.